you know, run to losers bracket. Very unfortunate for him. Um, I watched the match that put Mr. E in losers. Who was it? Was it Locus? Yes, it was Locus. Locus is indeed the reason that Mr. E is in losers. Um, they did not play yesterday. Um, so who knows if that was fortunate or not. <laughs> the two of them happened to go uh, back and forth on sets back at home at Long Island. And so it just looked like the tides were favoring Locus in this time. However, it is important to know with that set, Locus went all Ryu. That is Traditionally true. speaking, he likes to mix it up with Bayonetta to sort of like stave off a lot of E's pressure. So, um, so looking forward into this one, uh, he doesn't fight a lot of Sonics too often. There's a couple of them back home in New York, but I, I wouldn't say that they're really at the level of Siegel, Joe. And even at that, Joe can take out other characters. Like, yeah. He's no stranger to taking Sonic off the, you know, taking the token off of Sonic. Um, I would not advise it, but he has used Donkey Kong before and he has used Bowser Jr. as well. Uh, um, those are both gross. Keep those in customs or just <laughs> away. <laughs> Um, and uh, uh, occasionally Greninja, but I really would not advise that, especially with uh, Venya being in you guys' region. Yeah, nah. That's that's not a smart play. We'll see how uh, Seagull Joe can manage his Sonic against East Lucina. He's leading off here as we start things on set. Now, one thing uh, that Seagull Joe does have in his favor is that Dexter, a very proficient player in our region, uses uh, Lucina and Mark. So they have played a ton. So Seagull Joe should be familiar with this matchup. However, you know, Mr. E is a, a PGR player for a reason. So uh, you can play a great Marth and Cena in this area, but that ain't Mr. E. Yeah, I would argue that while many Marcina mains follow in the paths of Mr. E and many uh, top level Marth and Lucina players like him, he looks just not quite like E just because he has a very unorthodox approach to how he likes to pressure his opponents. Like, he'll like to juggle. Sometimes he'll just, like, go right in for the ball. And then other times he's just moving around swiftly and opponents can't catch up. There was an old player named Neo, and I was, I was just kind of thinking, like, Mr. E is kind of the new age Neo. He has that spacing, that little micro spacing, uh, those last second attacks. But the difference, he has the confidence to pull the trigger, just as you said. You know, he is not afraid to throw out an F smash in the face of danger. But right now, 104 apiece, you know, neither player clearly afraid to throw out any attack in the, the face of danger. Yeah, Seagull definitely recognizes the uh, the danger ahead of him with dealing with E, and he's doing a really good job of just trying to play the classic hit and run of Sonic. He doesn't want to commit too hard. Otherwise, he's looking at a strong tilt. He's looking at uh, some forward smash option that uh, could be spaced towards the ledge, towards the center stage, right in his face. But Seagull Joe doesn't care about that. Take him off the top, bring him with the back air, and take a lead. Good stuff for him, and it's really uh, critical that he, well, he lost stock right after. Okay. But uh, I was going to say it was very critical to get that stock. Um, obviously, he won the lead, but he was approaching the percent where Lucina could kill with an up throw. And that's when it's so scary, when you're you're playing a character with such good buttons and such good disjoints, and now you also can lose from um, getting grabbed. I always like to say how Mr. one of the Mystery's finest aspects is how he pressures shield. He's constantly threatening the shield, whether it's a barrage of normals, the occasional throwing out of the, uh, the shield breaker itself, or if he's just pressuring his opponents to the point where he doesn't even need to press buttons to put fear into him. So when you get to those pivotal percentages where up throw is suddenly an option on the table for him to kill with, I feel like that fear just gets further and just amplified. It does, but right now, you know, Siegel definitely clawing his way back. Showing that that theory is not really affecting him quite yet. Maybe he figures he doesn't need the shield as long as he keeps being this evasive. Um, but he is, you know, at that range where a smash attack will get rid of his stock. Maybe even an F tilt with bad DI. Mr. E still, you know, not really going to lose his stock barring a, a straight forward smash or... That's really it at this moment. Yeah, and while the, uh... While the rando forward smash is definitely more the forte of 6WX, Siegel's no stranger to it. He knows that it's willing to kill, and it's an excellent spacing option as well in this matchup. But all my man's needs is back air. Siegel's going to end up taking that game off. And that was a great conversion right there, you know? Did the spin dash, got the um, connect, and then recognizing it and just running it into that back air right after. And Joe, 
going up 1-0 right now versus Mr. E. I'll be very surprised to see if the set finds its way outside of the, uh, the Animal Crossing stages. Just because Smashville seems like the preferred stage between these two players, and especially for these two characters. And if there's going to be any variety in it, I feel like Talent City might be the pick, if that. Well, right now, maybe they should have went to Talon City because Seagull Joe starting off with a quick 46%. It was unanswered, but Mr. E did find a hit, but it was only one or two. Right now, Seagull Joe just looking great, but Mr. E finally getting a chance to play his own game. 48% has been tacked on throughout that process. Well, Seagull definitely had the strong start, trying to take some of that momentum in from game one. It only takes a few hits, and all of a sudden, Lucina's just back in there. And that's one of the benefits of playing Lucina across from Marth. Definitely understandable in a matchup like this, considering Sonic's moving so fast. Yeah, it's going to make it that much more difficult to face the, the Tipper F smash, so you should go with the balanced sword or balanced range if you are going to fight a character this fast. I've spoken with E lately about you know the, what goes into the pick of Lucina and Mark because we hardly see the Mark these days, and he just feels it's just better just to pressure out the opponent with his own sense of spacing. He doesn't need to put that amplified pressure on himself for having to worry about the tipper. And in certain matchups, it just doesn't really give him any more um, advantage than if he was to just swing with Lucina. Oh my goodness, that back! Head, I mean back throw. That just did it right there. This yeah, I, I, hey, listen, I guess with those percentages, it's, it's possible. I'm surprised he got there so fast. Also, I believe last round, Seagull Joe took the first stock while he was at 118% as well. Hey, look at that. Nice oh theming my play. Gosh. And just like that last game, Mystery managing to take that first stock almost immediately. That was just so good, though. It was so much authority behind that forward air right there. And that looked like maybe the... Momentum Mr. E needed, you know, taking uh, pretty much his first lead, his first real lead of the set so far. E doesn't like it when his opponents can take some sort of a percentage lead after that first stock. He always looks to hunt for it immediately. End it wherever he can, and especially uh, probably in this set. Right now, he is definitely putting Seagull in an uncomfortable position. Good job on Seagull. One, using that spin dash to get out of the situation. Two, avoiding that counter, but the next one did hit. So I'm not sure if that was a Seagull messing up or just great timing by Mr. E that next time around. Yo, we saw E ride the spring with Seagull. He's ghosting. This Sonic's moving so well. Now that's scary. Yeah, it's like, wow, you're really just going to take my tools and use it against me? That's awful. Like, he comes into Siegel's house, uses his tools, takes his advantage state, and takes that game. Oof. Like clockwork. So Mr. E is indeed going to tie this up 1-1 one, one apiece. And, you know, definitely made some adjustments, but it, it seemed like when he got that first stock off, he did not let up. You know, that forward air just coming on so strong and taking that momentum and just riding it all the way to victory. All right, so as I predicted, Town and City is going to be a stage setting at some point, and here we are for game three. Immediately, we see the counter again for me. We saw this a couple of times in the past two games, but now it's becoming especially uh, prevalent that it's just an option to respond to all the quick dashing that Seagull Joe's been throwing out. And it's a smart option, you know? At the end of the day, why not use a move that's going to give you a little bit of invincibility to stop the, the spinning ball that keeps wrecking habit on you? And Seagull's been doing a great job of using Spin Dash and charge, uh, the Charge Spin so that he can try and take a little bit of percentage, sort of respect the space that he's taking up with his blades and his aerials and whatnot. But if he's found the response, it's definitely reflecting in how Game 3's been going. Look at yeah. these percentages. He's thrown in a lot more uh, spot dodges, surprisingly. And it seems to really have messed up Seagull Joe's timing because he's trying to get kind of a, an opening, but Mr. E's just kind of avoiding it and then dancing, blading him right after. And then Seagull lands on the stage and then gets grabbed almost every time he stands up. That time he manages to actually get up on the stage and take a little bit of control and alleviate some of that pressure. But you know, it's only a matter of time until Mr. E's gonna put you right back in that precarious position. He's looking to do it quickly. That up there not gonna be canceling it out just yet. Seagull Joe leading, but he's running. He's trying to make what he can out of this stock. He's not done with it just yet. And as the platforms dissipate, Players trying to figure out some way to snatch a lead. And 
Brutal definitely trying, as you said. You know, definitely a fighter. That back throw, I don't think he's going to do it quite yet, but he does have to watch the spring this time around. The spring does hit great tech coming in from Mr. E. Mr. E now also put on notice. He has such a good, huge lead, but oh my gosh. Talk about a reversal. That hit was just a little bit too weak from by Seagull Joe. Mr. E responding with a falling up air. I'm going to take that stock. Uh, he's trying not, try not to leave center stage. Just sort of hanging around that center platform, waiting for Siegel to run into his positioning. And I like that as an option. He doesn't have any reason to extend onto Siegel Joe. And we've seen that Joe, time and time again, has made this stage his own to run free around. Well, I thought it was gonna happen. Yeah, I thought it was gonna happen too. A rare catch. You know, I'm surprised Siegel Joe was managed to find a that open for the back air, normally Mr. E is either spot dodging or he's throwing out a hitbox. You know, every time we keep on thinking that, that forward smash is coming through for the end, it's always back air. Sonic's got some good shoes on him. Every time. We well. those are Nikes, Air Forces. <laughs> like, are, are those Air Forces? They're Jordans, like LeBrons now. What are we doing? <laughs> we got them special made. Just for him. <laughs> Where else are you finding kicks with giant golden buckles on them? That's true. Those are the ones we had when we were kids. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to have a conveyor belt oh, exit. Uh, See, look, you know, Sonic always going out in style. Exit stage left. He's out of there. Yeah, just, just like that. So, game point in favor of uh, Mr. E. But Seagull's certainly not out of it just yet. That was looking like a tight battle outside of the uh, platforms deciding otherwise. Yeah, um... Definitely not completely one-sided, but it was rather commanding nonetheless by Mr. E. He definitely made quite the adjustments. Um, part of it the spot dodges, part of it the counters, um, and it just paid off. Seagull Joe now really going to have to dig deep and figure out what adjustments he wants to make, and it is apparently Bowser Jr. Pardon? Um, a, a, that's not a hedgehog. Those aren't shoes. And this is not a good matchup. But, well, um, hey, listen, if Siegel just feeling confident enough and it's taken out with tournament life on the line, let's see how Roy manages to uh, bring it out. Well, I, I, I suppose one reason he did it is he didn't want to go Diddy Kong, which he's known for, because he has to imagine Mystery is very familiar with that matchup. Um, so maybe he's going a bit of novelty effect. But then also, I quote Siegel Joe, my Roy Nice. My junior Nice, though. And uh, right now, he's definitely going to try to do it. He does actually have a lead at the moment until he kind of upbeat a little bit wild right there and Mr. E not letting him land. Finally, Seagull Joe getting his footing, even if it is only temporarily. Well, I'll certainly attest to the idea that this is, at, be it a well-played novelty, it is a novelty nonetheless. And a lot of this battle is going to be dictated about how well Seagull can move around in the Mecha Koopa card. And a lot of that can be intercepted with basic aerial pressure, which Mr. E has Almost builds a dynasty off of here in Smash 4. But hey, if Seagull can manage the, me the Mecha Koopa pressure well and just sort of stick on top of Mystery like he's been doing so, he can make, oh. make a believer out of me yet. He's still got a game to go. Right now, is that up throw going to do it? Not quite yet. He still has a game to go, but you know, Mr. E is trying to end it now. But you know, the Mecha Koopa does indeed connect coming into play just as you mentioned earlier and right now at 119 percent definitely to lose that stock Seagull Joe trying to keep that pressure up just kind of backing up with a couple episodes I'm not sure if he meant to do pivot grabs or not his classic back air Seagull Joe throwing him out but it is not enough Mr. E looking it in the eye connecting with that aerial and gonna take that stock and Joe's been doing a fantastic job of surviving up to this point Living up to pretty respectable percentages, but he needs to make it count because he's built uh, Mr. E to likewise high percentages. But at 142%, never mind, it's going to take a back air to do it, but he finally did it. Siegel has been back airing since the days of Brawl <laughs> with his Wolf. It does not matter what character you give him, that back air is going to come out. But right now, Mr. E not caring about the back air, the name of the game seems to be forward air. He is just connecting with it time and time again and just opening up that lead. Beautiful shield breaker coming in right there. Not gonna break the shield, but definitely tagged on a lot of damage. I feel like shield breaker is an especially smart option in this particular matchup, just because it's gonna reach so far ahead, and it's gonna check a lot of the space where Mecha Koopa occupies, regardless of if it's a uh, short hopped aerial approach or if he's charging forward with the side special. 
Yeah, I mean, as you mentioned that, he stopped going for side B, which maybe it is because of that shield breaker. Good patience by Mr. E, recognizing that the side B does not connect. He's gonna go for a grab after. Back hair from Mr. E, and you know, Mr. E, it looks at this point like he's almost doing kind of an autopilot space game. Yeah, and you know, he, he kind of stopped attacking Joe and just put up a wall and let Joe run into it time and time again. Hey, listen, man. Cruise control gets you from point A.